Clara speaks. <laughs> Poop head. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I laugh. I don't think I could do anything but laugh. I guess maybe Clara really does understand after all. I hide my head under the shade of the desk. I firmly push Betsy... I firmly push down Miss Yet to Be's head so that she doesn't come back up. Guns. Gunshots. Not only can they take out your eardrums, they could very well take out your whole ears, too. Oh, I know what this is. The substitution jutsu. You are correct. I suppose this is the reality, according to those muscle-bound idiots. The intruder kills the priest, runs up to the top floor, but once they corner her, she stands dumbfounded in the dread of death. The men shoot me to death with their guns. Eventually, the priest will return from the garbage dump and praise the men. Maybe even reward them somehow. The dread of death, please. This is why you guys are someone else's subordinates. We're ghosts, remember? Well, in any case, they must fear death themselves. Which is why they shot at me. They must have heard the stories of me being a ninja. And to hide their fear, they shot at me with an unreasonable amount of bullets. It all happens in a flash. The desk is big and sturdy, so there's no need to worry about getting hit by any bullets that ricochet or pierce through the wood. So I look towards the window. Several of the bullets meant for Clara hit the glass instead. At least one of the men must have lousy aim. Beyond the glass is the same town as ever. It looks more beautiful than it does from my apartment, but it's just a small little ghost town. Ow, ow. Oops, I loosen my grip. Miss yet to be nods her head as if to say, I know, I know. For some reason, that makes me feel relieved. <laughs> Nothing like a holy woman going down, huh? Correction. I don't think I feel relieved at all. The muzzle flash illuminates the scattering blood. It's my blood, or rather, the blood of Clara disguised as me. It kind of makes me sick to think about it like that. Bullets rain down upon the gold. Bullets rain down upon the bulky glass before us. Cracks form here and there before it finally shatters, thus eliminating the barrier between us and the town. Or perhaps I should call it the barrier between us and a sudden drop. But either way, it's a barrier we don't need right now. At the same time, I hear something collapse behind us. I don't want to look. She's not just a nun. She's Clara. I clearly remember that fact. Let's go. Huh? You're kidding. No way. The fact that she's saying that means she understands what I'm suggesting. I forcibly wrap my arm around her waist and halfway carry her. I wasn't expecting her to be this thin or anything, but she's thicker than I expected. In fact, her thickness is kind of reassuring. I'll give you the signal. You are kidding, right? I... Can... Fly! We. A man reflexively pulls the trigger when he sees me get up, but his aim is so bad his shot doesn't hit. The other men follow his lead, but they're too late. Without a word, we leap out the window. Miss yet to be screams something, but I'm not sure that counts as a word. We leap out of the top of the church, from the window of the priest's room. We fall into the cold wind with some late, shot-in-the-dark gunfire behind us. It's cold. Something feels cold inside me. The me who was in me moments before now is gone. I start thinking irrelevant thoughts like, you shouldn't go outside without a coat. But the lack of a coat means I can better feel the warmth of the girl under my arm. I'm so happy. Miss yet to be says those words like a soft whisper. It's a mystery to me how I'm able to hear her voice through all the whooshing wind sounds. But it's enough to make me feel satisfied. It's astonishing, really just like magic. Maybe she really is a witch. She made tonight a good night, despite all the trouble and all the cold. Back in my home country, ghosts wouldn't leave for the afterlife until they were content enough. Myself, I wouldn't mind leaving right now. This is nothing. Hmm? Also, keep this a secret, but... Hmm? I only whispered, but it seemed she heard me. Two. How strange. I'm not actually a ninja. Oh, I'm not actually a witch either. I figured. <laughs> it feels like we've been falling forever. I wonder what's up with that.
but obviously we just gotta land eventually. We end up crashing onto Anya's armored vehicle. Obviously, we couldn't just get up and walk away if we landed on a hard metal roof, but thankfully, Anya was considerate enough to fasten that sofa from earlier onto the top. As a result, we're able to pull off an exceptionally gentle landing. Ooh, I'm one hell of a driver, aren't I? God damn. But are those church shitheads up top? An, un an unenthusiastic... An unusually enthusiastic Anya pops her face out of the driver's seat window. Watch your language. I hear a thud from inside the car. Anya groans. Get in, quick. Pacifica pops her face out of the passenger seat window and urges us in. At the same time, we hear a gunshot, and several meters in front of the car, a random pile of snow bursts open. Get in before you get sniped. Miss yet to be and I hop into the back seat, and at the same time, we hear a concerning metal clank, suggesting the car got hit by a bullet. But this is an armored vehicle, so it's invincible. And in this moment, so were we. It's been ages since I'd ridden in a car. I've missed the low engine roar, so I can't help but listen closely to it. Nobody talks, probably because we hear a police car siren coming from behind. After a while, once we can no longer hear the police car siren, Anya parks the car in an alley somewhere. But even then, the silence isn't broken until I finally speak up and address Anya. Say, Anya? Yeah? This is the same one, isn't it? Yeah. Why? I didn't realize you still had it. I do. It'd be a waste to get rid of it, you know? I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I'm glad you came when you did. You're welcome for that. Anya lets out a sigh, as if she tried to laugh but failed. If only that were the case. Look at the two of you getting all lovey-dovey. Anyway, why did you call her and not me? Pacifica takes out a bag of snacks from somewhere and opens it. You'd think snacks would be out of place in an armored vehicle, and yet somehow it works. I didn't know your number, Pacifica. You could have just asked, Anya. Oh, you could have just asked Anya. I was in a hurry. I had to prepare a disguise, too. A disguise? I disguised myself and handed those mint-flavored tablets to a watchman as a bribe. Then I put in a new ventilation hole into the priest's skull and turned the nun into a colander. It's not until after I finished talking that I realized, oh crap, I shouldn't have said that. What I did was a small-scale insurrection, far from what any normal person would call ethical. I don't think those two would easily approve of my actions here. I'm sure they were expecting something a little more peaceful. I get the feeling I should have lied about it, but I don't want to. For real? Good thing we're friends. Anya says that so casually. Thank you. So I casually respond. Anya grumbles something about priorities. Hey, Sayako? You said, I'm gonna jump, so bring the car behind the church, right? After I'd gotten home from Pacifica's house, I had called Anya on the phone. That's right. The phone is a direct line between me and Anya. Anya quickly picked up, and I quickly hung up. I finally understand why I keep avoiding the phone. I must be the type of person who's not good with phones. Did you think that Anya of Green Gables here would understand what you meant just with that one sentence? Do you know what she said to me when she came to me for help? Pacifica munches on the corn snacks quietly, yet angrily. Yeah, I said, what's that supposed to mean? Exactly. If we did exactly what you said, we'd all be in jail right now. You understand? Pacifica opens up a second bag. This yet to be reaches for the bag, only to get her hand slapped away. Eep. That's why I came to you for help, okay? And I'm the one who told you to tie the sofa onto the roof. This girl was just going to bring the car as it was, you know. She's got poop for brains, remember? That's fine. No, it's not. Pacifica shouts. Miss yet to be finds some snacks on her own and starts munching on them, saying, It's not as good as ham, but it's okay now that I think about it. I figured Anya would come to you for help, and you'd catch on to what I was getting at, Pacifica. 
I was hoping that you two would fulfill my request, at least as stated, so, uh, thanks for going above and beyond. I see. Well, okay then. Her voice is so blunt, but somewhat tearful. I never want to make her cry again. We all fall silent for a while. I think it's because we're all feeling as if we had reclaimed something. But that sure turned out, uh, fun, didn't it? Indeed. Yeah. I agree. Also, question. Go ahead, new girl. Short time, no see. Yes, well, where are we going? No clue. I guess none of us really planned ahead. Honestly, I only planned to bust a new girl out. I didn't think about anything after that. Where should we go, Sayako? When she asks me that question, I respond with relative ease. Outside of town. I can feel the air get just a little colder. For real? Well, I kind of get where you're coming from. I don't remember what happened that day, so I want to try going out of town to jog my memory, I guess. Huh? What? Their faces freeze. What's with those looks? We don't remember. We don't remember what happened or what made you go, uh, you know. Well, actually, I do remember a little, but... We figured you'd remembered, Sayako. No, I don't remember. There are some things I remember, but they're far outweighed by what I don't remember. I'm shook, though I'm sure they're just as shook as I am. Miss yet to be curiously looks at each of our faces. That's right, she's an outsider. We should probably explain things to her. Just not now. Alright, memory lane it is. Let's go. Anya proclaims. Yes, let's go as far as we can go. Pacifica concurs. Okay. And I agree. Outside of town? Have you been informed about ghosts and whatnot? Mm. We're ghosts, immortal and unaging, locked up in this town. But since we're bored, we figure we'll take advantage of the chaos by going outside and crossing the boundary. Pacifica condenses the explanation perhaps a bit too much. The way she said it was kind of blunt. Normally, you wouldn't expect an outsider to easily agree to something like that. Whoa, that sounds kind of funky. But thankfully, Miss yet to be isn't normal, so there's no problem. I've already learned that from my short journey with her so far. Pussy, what does she mean by funky? Funky is funky. Huh. I can see us getting along with her. Let's go, let's go, sounds like fun. And we're off! Anya steps on the gas and the car speeds off. The ground's covered in snow, but the car just laughs it off. My heart throbs. Huh. I guess I still have a pulse, even though I'm a ghost. I'm glad my kidnappers are such fun this time. Miss yet to be just casually and unexpectedly says that. Kidnappers? Well, I don't even know your names. <laughs> I just came along for the ride before I got an explanation, so it's like you're kidnapping me. How fun. Kidnapping. The mood in the car suddenly gets tense. I did pretty much just kidnap her. But Pacifica and Anya don't know that. Sayako, did you just drag her out without giving her an explanation and she just went along with it? I was too busy eating ham. Ham? Oh, don't worry about it. I meant kidnapping in, like, a good way. There's a good way? Those church people wouldn't tell me anything about the town. And besides, it's much more fun to be with other girls. And you all seem like nice people. Well, okay then. That's fine, I suppose. Well, as long as Miss yet to be is satisfied, that's fine, I guess. We all fall silent for a while. The view from outside the window gets sadder and sadder as the town slowly fades away into a barren field of snow. Outside of town. I wonder what's on the other side. We need to have a welcome party. Pacifica chimes in. I guess she's grown tired of the snacks. A welcome party? That's what we've all gathered here for. 
So you kidnapped me to throw a welcome party. Wow, a surprise party! Thanks. Oh, about that. How about we make it a birthday party instead of a welcome party? It seems more festive that way. A birthday party? For a ghost? How about we give you a name as a birthday present? How lovely. Sayako, you're so talented. Talented at what? We giggle, but Anya stays quiet. I guess she's having a tough time driving. However, that isn't the case. Okay, time for some bad news. Anya clears her throat and starts speaking. This car is equipped with a powerful engine so it can run anywhere, and is carrying a ton of fuel. How powerful? Let's just say that barring wear and tear, it can run pretty much forever without resupply. Honestly, this thing's built like a tank. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be running properly, and I'm sorry to tell you this, but um... It's gonna explode. We need to run. We can't. We've got 30 seconds, and the blast radius will be hundreds of meters wide. It'll tear up the ground and spread radioactive fallout everywhere. That's an objective fact. As a practical solution, I propose we complete this birthday party within those 30 seconds. That's all the more reason to get out of this thing. The blast radius is hundreds of meters long, Posse. I suggest you give up. 25. <laughs> I understand. Let's move on to the gift giving, then. 22. Um, your name is Ham. No, wait. 18. Yoru. Yoru means night. That's what the Yo in Sayako also stands for. And we met her at night. So, Yoru. For something I came up with on the spot, it's actually a pretty good name, I'd say. Then again, ghosts are dwellers of the night, so maybe every ghost in town can probably be called Yoru. But these people don't know what kanji are, so I don't think anyone will catch on. What a lucky break. <laughs> Two nightly names. Within me, she is there. She is there within me. This is my little secret. Time passes as I think to myself. Whoa, that's nice and simple. It's straight to the point. Good, that's the spirit. Good name. 10 out of 10. 10. Happy to birthday, Yoru. Seven. We got the important stuff out of the way in just nine seconds. Things are getting kind of hectic, but it makes me feel something. It makes me feel alive. Let's be friends. Four. The flow of time is like the temperature. If either of them drop to zero, you freeze. I'll be your friend, too. That's why all this commotion seems kind of warm. Welcome to the ghost town. It's a joyous sort of warmth. Thank you all. Okay, the end. And thus begins our story. I think. Well, that was something else. That was dense. That was also about twice as long as the first chapter. We, we beat up an old man, several police officers, killed a priest, a random guy with a gun, and a child. And that was the second chapter of five? What's going to happen now? Summer. It's summer everywhere you look. You can hear chattering voices everywhere. From the group of middle schoolers enjoying the breeze at the convenience store, to the elderly spacing out in the shade, to the elementary schoolers playing around in the park. As I pedal my bike, I can feel my feet getting sore from the sandals that were given to me for days like these. But I figure I can just put up with it. After all, I'd be seated for the duration of the movie. Oh, the signal turned red. I firmly squeeze the worn down brakes and my bike gradually slows down. But it doesn't come to a complete stop, so I plant my feet on the ground to try and forcibly stop the bike, and that's when I realize something. Crap. It's like I'm just the usual me now. This extraordinary, cute sundress came from a faraway country, but I'm not used to wearing this sort of fabric. Its new scent mixes with my own. 
I hope that kid doesn't find it unpleasant. The signal turns green. I start pedaling again. The wind whisks away my sweat. It's a nice breeze. We're meeting by the station. I gotta hurry. I don't want to be late. I steadily pass through the residential area, in front of the supermarket, and through the roundabout. I don't get caught at any traffic signals after that. How lucky. Ah, the kid's here and hasn't noticed me yet. What should I say? This will probably be our last time meeting, so I have to make it count. I'm just an ordinary summer sight. An average elementary schooler on summer break. I can't wait to see the movie.